for do for further analysis. When we check the HSP27 in different stresses like heat, cold, salinity, and dehydration, we found that this in HSP27 was almost 35 fold up regulated in, uh, in heat stress, almost 21 fold up regulated in cold stress, and almost 48% up regulated in uh, heat stress uh, and salinity stress. So uh, to check the abiotic stress tolerance, we use the yeast system to just check, confirm that whether this gene is working uh, in the yeast system or not. So we cloned this gene in uh, this vector PYS2, and this was confirmed by this the section digestion. And then it is a fixed particle vector, and then we overexpress this gene in yeast. We can see here that transgenic cells overexpressing this HS. SHP27 showed enhanced uh, tolerance to heat, uh, dehydration, and NACL 2.5 molar in cell. So you can see the overexpressing each cell of the HSP27. They are surviving very well when this wild type is dying. So it shows that in heterologous system, that gene from Fox10 millet is, is working quite in the east. But this is not the conclusive proof because this is just to show that whether it is working in other system or not. Uh, for to do this, we overexpress this HSP27 in rice and, uh, and transgenic rice lines so overexpressing HSP27 was generated and the evaluation of uh, these positive clones was done in P2 generation. So this is the construct. I'm not going details about the construct, but the result I can show you. This is the gas expression analysis of the leaves of the transgenic rice plant. And uh, that A to F is uh, line one to six with gas expression where G is the control, non transform leaf, and uh, H is the leaf of transgenic vector control. So it shows that yes, uh, the lines have been uh, uh, transformed very well. And this is the P shared amplification of H2G2 gene from transgenic rice allied cellar. So when we did the phenotypic evolution of uh, evaluation of the HSP27 uh, in the overexpressing rice lines, uh, we found that uh, most of the adrenergic traits such as plant height, uh, number of feeder per plant, number of panicle per plant, panicle length, number of grains per panicle are observed to be higher in transgenic plants as compared to the wild type. You can see here in wild type uh, and then that this transgenic line L1, L4, L10. So in all the traits, it was improving, but there is no change in weight per 100 grain and length per 10 feet. So then we did the uh, uh, response of this in ROS, and we found that the transgenic lines, lines exhibit low ROS accumulation in response to heat stress. And this was also confirmed by the chlorophyll content, and this is the uh, chlorophyll A, this is the chlorophyll B, and this is the total chlorophyll content of wild type and the three transgenic lines. So the different colors is orange color is control, and this uh, uh, this uh, yellow is the heat is the day four, and green one is the heat stress in day eight. So you can see if we can concentrate on this last uh, uh, picture, the total chlorophyll content. You can see here the sharp decrease in chlorophyll content was found in the wild type. And uh, in response to heat, about 75% chlorophyll loss was observed in the wild type after eight days of continuous heat stress. And chlorophyll loss during the heat stress is comparably much less in the transgenic lines. You can see here the transgenic lines are behaving better, all the three transgenic lines, as compared to the wild type. And if you consider this uh, green one, that heat stress at eight uh, days, and so it is, you can see here, here that it is here. So about 75 to 80% uh, profit loss was observed in the wild type. So we also ever expressed and uh, edit a, a disease in, uh, in Foxton millet. And this was also standardized and we recently published and showed that almost 27% transformation efficiency was obtained while doing the transformation of Foxton millet. So this gene was also overexpressed in uh, susceptible cultivar of fox millet. At the same time, it was also silenced in the tolerant cultivar to 
So uh, coming to the bigger picture, that uh, how to identify the candidate gene? Because as I showed in hits of protein, 113 hits of factors protein was there, but we identified one based on the, uh, the, the expression study. So similarly for other gene families, we also did the, this is the pipeline for this uh, how to integrate the pipeline, how to identify candidate gene. So you have to identify the gene family members first, then you do the gene structure, chromosome location, duplication, divergence, these are all in silico. Then the domain architecture, phylogeny, physiochemical properties, promoter analysis, gene ontology, expression profiling, this is all in silico. And then once you identify this candidate gene and then you do this overexpression in heterologous sequence, the like I have shown for E to get an first an idea how it works. So by this way, we have identified 124 uh, C2S2 type gene finger protein, 209 mid transcription factor, 110 genes for working transcription factor, 160 genes for the secondary cell wall related C4 biofuel model Citeria italica, and then 23 and 25 genes identified in Oligia sativa and Citeria italica of ADP ribosylation factor. So, uh, a recent one is this one recently published in Journal of Biotech Genomic Dissection on Expression Analysis of Stress Responsive Gene in C4 Panicoid Model Citeria italica and Citeria viridae, where we have checked all the genes of the stress responses in both these. Uh, progenitor, uh, the wild relative of Foxton millet, that is Citeria italica, versus Citeria milligans. So, uh, for this is the integrated pipeline for transcription factor study, uh, and by this way, uh, we have identified different classes of transcription factor, and the number written in bracket is the number of genes for the particular transcription factor. And we have developed a database for Fox family transcription factor database. So this is the backbone of the database, and this is the uh, data available in the uh, database. So you can see here that this is a snapshot of the Fox family transcription factor database. So coming to the uh, large scale market development based on the 2012 genome sequence information of Fox millet. So we use the transcription data. And then we identify the coding sequence and intronic region. From intronic region, we have identified the internal and polymorphic markers. More than 5,000 ILP markers have been developed for this uh, uh, coding sequence so by using the MISA pipeline. It's a bioinformatic tool to identify the microscope markers. We have identified 500 SSR markers. And this uh, genomic resource, the resources have been utilized for genotyping assays. Similarly, for uh, uh, the transposable element-based marker, we have developed 20,000 uh, repeat junction-based marker, and uh, which was used for the genotyping assay. And there are different classes that uh, you can see here: LPR finder like uh, Copia, Gypsy, non-LPR like Line Sign, and the class two DNA transposable so repeat marker, the different class. So there are four different types of markers from the transposable element has been developed. So the number consists of more than 20,000 uh, transposable element based marker has been developed in Fox Millet. And at the same time, we have also developed a database for that so that the general public, uh, they can use it and they can uh, use in different crops also. So these are the three, uh, four basically types of marker we have developed. One is the ESSR marker, elect uh, internal and polymorphic marker, micro based marker. This is the first kind we have developed for micro based marker and after that people have been developing right also. And then the transposable element based marker. So this is the number of markers developed for different classes. This is the polymorphism in Fox and Millet. And this is very important that you can see there that uh, uh, that ESSR and ILP, they are more than 85% are transferable. And for micro it is 50% and transposable element we have not studied. But the result is encouraging so that the people in working in different crops, they can utilize this information for their crop improvement program. So based on that, uh, we have done this comparative mapping of uh, maize, sorghum, and brachycodium. And these are the stories we have published uh, in four or five years back. 
So coming to the utilization of this as a market developer for toxin millet, we did associated mapping for the yield trade. And for that, as I said, that we have that 170, we actually increases the number, 184 retaliatory accessions from diverse geographical regions where phenotype for stained yield contributing agronomic traits. And these are the traits based on flowering plant height, pillar number, flag leaf, and thousand grain weight. And for the three countries here at NIPGR field, and we have identified eight markers which are associated with nine different agronomic traits with a statistical value of uh, 0.05 and contrib contributing to 6 to 25 percent of phenotypic uh, variation. So, for example, uh, grain weight, this microsecret marker D260, located in chromosome 1, explains 25 percent of the phenotypic variation. It means if the trait is the one where 100 percent, so this marker itself, D260 on chromosome 1, is tightly linked and highly associated with grain weight. And it explains one fourth of the total variation for the trait of interest. So these are the publications from the market development, more than 5,000 interland markers, more than uh, and the database. And then this is the ESSM market development. This is the population structure and social mapping, just I showed you. And then uh, when this NGS business comes, then we shift from our uh, generated marker to this uh, NGS thing uh, with the same set of genotypes, the same phenotypic data. Uh, we use this NGS technology and we identified 30,000 uh, SNPs in uh, distributed in 25.9 SNP per MB. Maximum SNP density was observed on chromosome 8 and uh, minimum was on chromosome 9. And these are the distribution of SNP in different chromosome of nine chromosome of oxygen millet. And this is the technique what how the NGS has to use the DD that sequence. So this is the cut shot of this uh, mapping of uh, quantity traits loci for the agronomic trade. And we identified 81 markers which are associated with uh, involving 79 SNP were identified for these different agronomic traits. We also identify uh, some uh, mark, uh, candidate genes, and these are the SNP, and this is the chromosome location of this SNP, and this is the position of the uh, investor in the genome, and this is the SNP variation, and what are the favorable allele, p value, and the P2D candidate gene function. So these are the uh, uh, flag leaf weight, then yield, thousand grain weight. So these are the three important traits we have identified P2D candidate gene for that. Similarly, if we did the same uh, DD rat sequencing for the 10 micronutrients, as I showed you in my introductory slide, that we have also estimated phenotypically you know, the sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, manganese, boron, nickel, all the micronutrients, the 10 micronutrients we have estimated in the whole population. And we identified 74 market trade association uh, for the 10 uh, micronutrients. So these are, this table shows the, uh, the candidate genes we identified for both the, all these micronutrients, boron, magnesium, zinc, and iron. And these are the chromosome number, and these are the SNP position, and this is a desirable allele linked with this uh, high boron thing, and these are the candidate genes. Uh, we did last year we published this thing in Journal of Serial Science. So uh, whatever we have developed with the genomic resources, we have basically put it in the form of a web resource. And there are four different web browsers we have developed. And in Fox Millet, uh, this is one of these kinds, the Fox Millet Marker Database, a versatile database of Fox Millet Marker for millet and bioenergy grass research. So if I cut the story in a one slide. So when we started this story, uh, then at that time, only 26 ESSR and 98 ILP marker was available in the literature for the gene, DEV, NAC, and WD40 was first to be characterized. But over the time period, you can see here, we have developed thousands of different kinds of markers in Fox 10 millet. Similarly, we have characterized several gene transcription factors uh, family members in Fox and Belay. 
So these are the databases, the Fox Emulator Marker database, Fox Emulator Transposable Element Marker database, and the, uh, this is a Fox Emulator Transcription Factor database. So anybody can go, and there is a very good web service was there, comparative mapping CMAP, so that you can compare our Fox Emulator resources with other uh, imported uh, serial stock also. So if you want to know further about uh, what we have done uh, in uh, Fox and Millet, so you can read our uh, this uh, review article and published in 2015, uh, Theoretical and Applied Genetics, Advances in Cytoidal Genomics for gen Genetic Improvement of Serial and Bioenergy Process. And then we also published a dedicated book uh, to Fox and Millet Genome. And, uh, and last year in August, uh, in this month, uh, we have uh, conducted uh, one uh, one day symposium that is neglected and underutilized crop species for food, nutrition, energy, and environment at NITJ with the thematic area of genetics and genomics of orphan crops. Uh, all the orphan crops I showed in the introductory slide, they have been not only millet, other tubers, uh, uh, legumes. That had been uh, presented in this one day symposium. And uh, then we, the important session was also conducted, tapping the wild germplasm for crop improvement. This is very important that in the current scenario. So, this is uh, a nutshell about the Fox and Millet story. And uh, I can thank my students for this. And the HSP work was done by uh, Roshan Kumar Singh. Uh, last month he defended his thesis. Now he is become doctor, and uh, and the database and the uh, genome study has done by Muthu. He is now faculty. I think he had last time he has talked in this webinar series also. So Muthu has developed all the databases and the uh, genome study from Fox and Millet. And the work, has, whatever I presented today, was mainly funded by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India and partially by the Department of Science and Technology. So thank you very much for your patience to uh, hear it. And uh, I will answer the question with what I have got from the different uh, participants. So this is all over from my side, Subhabrato. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, we uh, got, uh, we collected few questions from uh, YouTube and I, I uh, pasted uh, here in the chat box, uh, uh -huh. just, uh, uh, here is the name and the questions of the. So this is article. the first question. If I remember correctly, what role will Fox Emulet play in global food security? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, it is uh, we are we are coming on that. Uh, it uh, okay. th these are the here we are going to paste the questions in just a minute, sir. Okay. 